I have been reading a nonfiction called Under the Black Flag, which is a nonfiction book telling the true tales, what we know historically about the most notorious and infamous pirates in our history. It's excellent and I love it. And it has ignited my obsessive tendencies and I've fallen down many rabbit holes researching more about these pirates. So today we're going to talk about one of the most infamous pirates in our history, Edward Teach, sometimes spelled as Edward Thatch, but better known as Blackbeard. Much like our Teach, not much is known about the historic Blackbeard. However, we do have some historical documents and personal accountings that we can go off of to know a little bit about the life he led. And there are some really fun similarities between our Blackbeard and the historic Blackbeard. It is believed that early in Blackbeard's life, he served as a privateer in the Queen's War. Now, a privateer was a person or ship that engages in warfare under a commission of war. Essentially, piracy was illegal, but during wartime, the government would commission individuals or ships to carry out all forms of piracy. And the exchange was that these privateers could only attack enemy ships, people that their government was at war with, and they had to give a percentage of their spoils to the government. So it was essentially government legalized piracy for a mutually beneficial goal. However, when the war was over, the privateers no longer had the position of being essentially lawful pirates. So many privateers turned to piracy, including Teach. The historic Blackbeard was believed to only have been a true pirate, a non-privatized pirate, for two years. Yet rumors of what he had done had spread so far and wide. He pillaged and stole across the coast, earning himself the name of El Gran Diablo, or the Great Devil. Even though the historic Blackbeard isn't known as the most successful pirate in history, that name belong or that title belongs to Bartholomew Roberts, who Bartholomew Kuma is named after, also very interesting. Anyway, even though he's not known as the most successful pirate who, who brought in the most bounties, or not bounties, the most prizes, captured the most ships, but, or raided the most ships, but he is known as the most notorious. His name was known far and wide by everybody and feared. His name was Feared, to the point that sometimes he could capture a ship and board that ship and the captain would just surrender without any need for actual engagement, actual battle, because he realized who he was up against and he would just give up. And a big factor in how he was so notorious and so widely terrified was in how he presented himself. He held a sling over both of his shoulders, which held six pistols. He would take pieces of his beard and braid them with ribbons. And he was allegedly known to take long, slow burning fuses and lighting them and sticking them under his hat so that he would have an aura of smoke around his head. The fuse thing didn't serve any sort of purpose other than just adding intimidation and confusion, but I think that that's absolutely brilliant. I actually think that all of the things that Blackbeard did to uh, to his appearance were very strategic and very smart. Like the idea of a pirate, a true, notorious, terrifying pirate braiding his hair with ribbons. is a, It's a weird choice. It's a weird thing to do, but it's actually so brilliant if you think about it because it's so startling and shocking and wild and strange. Like imagine a pirate boarding your ship and charging you with 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 ribbons in his and braids in his beard, just something very strange, smoke billowing around his head and wild eyes charging at you. Like is that not enough to just really startle a, per a person and make them respond in a very emotional way. I don't know, I, th I just think, I think that's so smart. I think that's so clever. Another fun fact is that at one point, Blackbeard, the historic Blackbeard, took on a man, took a man named Bonnet onto his ship and uh, took him under his wing. And it was kind of believed among historians that he did this just to command another ship because after he had him under his wing for a short time, taught him the ropes, really taught him a lot because he was very inexperienced, he then betrayed him left him and his crew marooned and stole his ship. That should also be mentioned. The correlation here between the historic Blackbeard and our Blackbeard isn't one-to-one, -one, but I do think that it's close enough that it's fun, like how 
our Blackbeard was taken under the wing of Whitebeard, probably learned a lot under his tutelage, and then eventually betrayed one of his own for a devil fruit. And the fact that the crew member that our Blackbeard betrayed, his name was Teach, and the historic Blackbeard, some historical records have him down as Edward Thatch, but in some and so, and other historical records have him down as Edward Teach, and I think that's cool that both of those names are deemed correct by the historic Blackbeard, and our Blackbeard betrayed a Teach under similar circumstances to the historic to what the historic Blackbeard did. I just think that's fun. In the real Blackbeard's career, there was also this famous blockade that he pulled off. He blockaded the city of Charlestown, South Carolina, now Charleston, South Carolina, and in that he captured loads of ships that were trying to come in and out, one of which was filled with many of the rich residents of this town. So Blackbeard sent a message to the governor saying, basically give me my demands, uh, my ransom, or I'll cut off all these hundreds of people's heads and send them your way. And also burn down all the ships that I've captured too. So it was a real big threat and he said, you have two days and uh, it didn't, it took longer than two days, but they did get what they wanted. And what did the historic Blackbeard ask for? A chest full of medicine. Again, it's not one-to-one, -one, but it is very reminiscent of recent chapters where Blackbeard had captured a large number of people it's certainly possible, and I th I think that he's done it to use as a ransom or as a bargaining chip to the world government, specifically to the celestial dragons, uh, to get what he wants, which is an island of his own that he can be a king of, and for that island to be officially recognized by the world government. Also, at the same time, what's he doing? Trying to get a hold of some very powerful medicine through our boy, Water D. Law. While we're making stretches in these correlations, I think that I should also mention that some historians theorize that Blackbeard was a part of the group of people that was trying to get the House of Stuart reinstated as an officially recognized royal house by the royal government. I'll put it on the screen so you can read kind of a quick write-up of the history behind that, but this is a royal house that was, that lost its title and a group of people were trying to reinstate it as being recognized as officially a royal house. And uh, Blackbeard is, what's he trying to do? Trying to get his island recognized as an official island that he could be king of. It's a big stretch. You can ignore this part of the video. I just think it's fun. And if this comes to be something I think it's interesting. Now let's take a brief departure from me digging way too deep to try to make connections between a fictional person and a real person, and let's talk about the true, the historic Blackbeard's final demise. Blackbeard's ship, his actual ship, has been found and has been studied for decades now. So through that studying that's been done over the years, they have determined that Blackbeard was likely careening his ship, which is when you follow high tide up on the shore, and uh, when the low tide comes, you're able to do some repairs on the bottom of the ship or clean it, um, maintenance, you can do maintenance. So he was careening his ship and he ended up getting it stuck on a sandbank and then used another ship to try to get it out and then that ship ended up getting lost too. Some historians think that he did this by accident and it was just like a gravely foolish mistake. Some historians think that he was a far better sailor than to have done something like that, so he may have done this on purpose to try to break up his crew. Anyway, this is how he lost his ships. He lost them both. Shortly after that, the king's pardon was offered which was essentially saying that if you were a pirate up until this date committing acts of piracy, you can receive the king's pardon, you can stop, give up your piracy ways, quit doing that, and we won't penalize you, we won't execute you for your crimes. Many pirates did end up taking this pardon to include Blackbeard. In that, he also became, the friend, became a friend of a governor and became a privateer once again and continued his piracy ways, but this time legalized under the government once again. So that was the end of his two year span of being a true pirate and outlaw pirate. We don't really know why he decided to take the king's pardon. It could be that he just wanted that added protection of still being able to do the, the pillaging and the stealing and the piracy. And some people think he ultimately didn't have a choice but to take the king's pardon after he lost his ships in the careening incident. And as we all know, without a ship, 
you can't really call yourself a pirate crew. Blackbeard did ultimately die in battle. He was targeted by another pirate crew. They tricked him and were able to overpower him. His head was cut off, his body thrown into the water, and his head was hung on the bow of the ship for a period of time and then put in a public area where it continued to hang as a warning to pirates as well as, as just a reminder, I guess, and a greeting to people coming in to the area and it hung there for years. This likely contributed to him still to this day being one of the most notorious pirates in the world. Even though his piracy career was very short-lived, he still is in popular works of fiction like One Piece and is a kind of a household name. If you know pirates, you probably have heard of Blackbeard because he didn't meet his end at the hangman's noose like many, many notorious pirates did. And the way he did meet his end in battle and then as a reminder for years to come, probably added to his reputation and to his legendary status. Anyway, this is not a theory video. I'm not trying to say that our Blackbeard is going to meet the exact same end that the historic Blackbeard did, and I'm also not trying to say that Oda made all of these parallels that I've mentioned in this video intentionally, though I think he did most of them intentionally. Some of these, especially his appearance and a few specific acts, uh, moments in his history that are kind of what he's known for are really good parallels. And I'm currently reading Don Quixote and even early on in the book where I am, there's so many strong thematic parallels between that book and the themes of Dressrosa. Look out for a video for that later this month because oh my goodness. And I think that Oda is very, very intentional oftentimes in where he draws his inspiration. So I do think that some of this is intentional. Anyway, like I said, this is not a theory video. This is not a speculation video. I just read a nonfiction, learned some more about a pirate. It led me down a rabbit hole. I thought it was interesting. I thought you might too. That's all. Anyway, thank you to today's sponsor, Blackbeard, who gives me 10% of his spoils. Please subscribe or you'll be his next target. Bye.